Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alex Vance, but that is totally insignificant next to our special guest here, Shay. The director, primary voice actor, writer, producer. Daniel! Daniel Johannes Back! Let's start a preview of Lake 2. Bananas Revenge. Okay, we're going to run through this in a fair clip. We're actually starting on time, which is rare for the panel at, uh, at Europe. Yeah. Uh, we have a Beamer, we have an iPad, we have a recorder that looks like a phaser from Star Trek, but. Uh, Enough well, phasers to record. Uh, yeah, set phasers to fun, and let's do some let's do some voice acting. Um, so there's going to be there's going to be two parts to this. First of all, we're going to run through a little presentation that I've prepared, with lots of sexy uh, uh, sort of keynote style transitions, and then we're actually going to do some audience participation. <laughs> and apparently mine. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes? Hello. Oh. <laughs> Apparently you thought that this was the standing still looking baffled panel. <laughs> 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 alright, alright, voice acting. Are we ready? Do we want to learn about this? Yeah. yeah. Alright, yeah. we're going to do this in two parts as well. Voice and acting, right? Okay. We're, we're, so far so good. Alright. The voice. This is what happens when you cut somebody in half. Then you see all of these faces. But look at it, look at it. What's really interesting about this is the relative size of various sort of acoustic chambers where the human voice is produced. The human voice is produced by the, uh, um, the vocal cords, obviously. Let me close the door again, because it's starting to get a little unruly out there. Sound is nothing more than pressure waves propagating through air. If the pressure waves are intense, the sound is louder. Uh, if the air is moving, it carries farther. So we have a very sophisticated set of organs and acoustic chambers built into our bodies uh, to enable us to produce very sophisticated kinds of sound compared to other animals. But if you look at the relative sizes of the various chambers where it, ha it can have the, the, the sort of amplification of your voice that happens in your chest, in your throat, in your mouth, and in your nose. Your, ni your, your nose cavity is enormous, but people underestimate that. Um, we'll be talking about that just a little bit in a second. All right. The mouth um, is where most of the sound is shaped. You have your lips, you have your tongue, you have your soft palate, and you have the back of your throat. That's how you shape the sounds that you make. Um, proper use of that makes make certain that uh, uh, you actually sound intelligible to whoever is, uh, uh, is listening. The nose, now, you have no control, very, very little control about the shape and the, 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 the aperture of your nose, obviously. A lot of bass is produced there, and the great advantage of bass low sounds is that they carry very far. Um, they're hard to place, they're hard to find nuancing, but they carry very far, which means that a single person can be standing in a room. He doesn't necessarily need a microphone if everybody shuts up and if he projects his voice correctly to the back of the uh, uh, to the back of the hall. The chest, the lungs, it's a bellows. It's where the air obviously is pushed out. If you push it harder, the sound will carry farther. But there's a couple of other slight nuances to, to take into account. Um, your style of breathing, the way you exhale, the way you um, shape the cavity in your chest can actually affect how you sound in very, very subtle kind of ways. Those of you who have any training as singers will know that there are two styles of breathing. Either you use your ribs, where you expand your, uh, uh, your rib cage in order to enlarge your lungs and suck into their all this. Everything would have fallen apart if you were in this little cable. Thank you. No problem. The other style of breathing is using your diaphragm. The diaphragm is a membrane of muscle that sits between your lungs, between that uh, sort of vacuum sealed chest cavity that makes sure that we can breathe, and your guts, everything below that. But it is actually muscle. Um, that's what happens when you hiccup. That muscle spasms. Um, so singers are trained not just to use their, uh, their chest cavity, but for certain performances to try and relax their chest and try to just breathe from their stomach. And you can do this by relaxing your abdomen. I'm getting really fat. I'm getting thin, I'm getting fat. Okay, I'm running through this at a fair clip because we want to get to the fun part. We want to get to the audience participation. All right, 
the amount of breath that you exhale, that helps you uh, uh, project more loudly, you project your voice farther. All right. Vocal technique, delivering the words. What can we do? When you start a recording session for voice acting, it's important to prepare yourself because you're going to be sitting quite still, um, fairly alone and abandoned, and very, very sad. So it's important that you're in a, in a sort of level headspace, right? So be rested, comfortable, calm, eat, drink, and digest. It's, it's really good advice. You just want to make sure homeostasis is the medical term, I believe. You make sure that your body is at rest, that all your needs have been met, uh, that you've had enough rest, that you've had enough food, that you've had enough to drink, and you can just chill out for an hour and perform. Nice. All right, Love we good? Everybody comfortable? <laughs> Rested, <laughs> comfortable, and calm? Have you all eaten, drunk, and digested? And the last thing is clear, you know, you saw how massive the nasal cavity is, and it's usually full of really disgusting gunk and slime and shit. <laughs> and that's fine. That's how it's, that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, it protects us from all sorts of uh, uh, really nasty stuff in the air. But it also obstructs a lot of the sound that we're trying to produce. And when you're trying to make a recording, you want to get as much of your voice recorded, as much of the nuance, as much of the detail, because then afterwards you can bring that out in the post-processing, which we're also going to be talking about a little bit. So, don't be embarrassed. Come on in. Hello, welcome. Yeah, keep coming. More. <laughs> This is, a, this is a fire hazard, but uh, as long as nobody lights up any cigarettes, I think we should be fine. Um, so don't be embarrassed to just really dig in there and get everything out. No one can see your stupid face. That's a bit of advice that you'll be hearing a lot. Warm up with a song. Now this, okay, it sounds a little bit silly maybe, but it actually really helps you to hear yourself, because when you start talking into a microphone, you don't really have a, a basis for comparison. You don't have anybody else who's talking to you. Um, so you don't really know if you're speaking at the correct volume, right? Generally, when you've been in an environment that's completely silent, when you haven't been speaking for a while, you'll find yourself kind of, kind of whispering, kind of mumbling and not articulating enough. So when you warm up with the song, Preferably one that's, um, you know, it's, it's nice and gentle, it has some nuance. It doesn't have very powerful highs and lows, so you're not going to stress out your voice immediately. Uh, I like Gilbert and Sullivan. Sighing softly to the river comes the loving breeze. No one? Really? No. Okay. <laughs> On a tree by a river, a little tomtit sang. Willow tit, willow tit, willow This is hopeless. <laughs> I am really disappointed in you guys. Show some culture. Gilbert and Sullivan, beautiful, beautiful operettas, um, and they're they're excellent to warm up with. It's like the wow, something exciting is happening out there. The gay pride. Oh, it's the modern version and the gay pride. Wow, this is an awesome time to do our voice recording. Well, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. The other important aspect of vocal technique is posture. Now, this seems weird because. You're not, being, you're not being photographed, you're not being videoed, so why would you care about the posture? Well, it really determines how you sound. So you have to obviously make sure that you're comfortable, but you want to make sure that you open your chest, ignore your hands, because your hands make a lot of noise that you don't want. They fiddle with things, and they drop things, and they tap on things. Your hands are your enemies when you're doing voice recording. Know your freedom. It kind of means know the amount of motion that you can get away with without ruining your recording. And that means stuff like, this chair is kind of creaky, so I'm not going to lean back. I'm going to sit up straight because I'm too lazy to just uh, uh, put a few dabs of oil on there. Also stuff like how far away you can get from the microphone um, without, again, ruining your, uh, um, your recording. So know your environment. Know what you can and can't lean on, touch, tap, whatever. All right. Moving swiftly along. Microphone technique. Recording your voice. The microphone is a fantastic tool uh, to record sounds. Nowadays, they are so cheap. Really good microphones are so cheap. At home, um, I have the most expensive piece of audio equipment I have at home um, was the, the sort of the, 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 the radio arm that swings the microphone down so I can just pull it down like a radio operator. It, I just wanted it because it's fucking cool. <laughs> but it's the most expensive single piece of equipment that I've got. And that was, I don't know, it was like 80 euros. The microphone, uh, an MXL 990, perfectly decent microphone. Uh, it's only 70 euros on, uh, on Amazon, and the, uh, um, the, 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 the plug from Sure that converts it from an XLR plug to a USB plug 
that was also about 70, 75 euros. So getting decent equipment is not such a huge hassle. You will notice, though, that there is not even that here. We don't have any recording equipment here. Or do we? Nowadays, we have certain, you know, we have laptops, we have iPads, we have phones. Everybody here has a computer of some sort. And if you have even a sort of 25 euro uh, USB headset, can produce really good recordings. They're not super great, they're not awesome professional quality, but they can make very, very decent recordings. And even 20 years ago, the most professional studios would have been really jealous of the kind of recording quality that can come out of this. So, how do you actually uh, avoid ruining the potential of this fantastic microphone? Because it can record in fantastic detail, but you have to be able to give it a clean signal. So watch out for the proximity effect. Now, what is the proximity effect? The closer you get to someone, and those of you who have been intimate with a lady or gentleman might notice that when they are mumbling into your ear, it sounds extremely intense. Um, proximity effect is the bass quality, the, uh, the low sounds, the intense low sounds of the human voice, uh, they really come out the closer you get to someone's mouth because they're produced in the nasal cavity and after they come out of the nose, they move down, right? So they become an ambient sound, but you're not actually projecting very much of your bass, uh, of the bass sound of your voice unless you get very close. So when you're getting closer to the microphone, be aware your voice is going to sound lower. You can use this to good effect if you're trying to do uh, a very low, a very intense, a very dark kind of voice, you want to get closer, you want to maybe speak a little softer so that the bass of your voice can, uh, uh, is more pronounced. Usually, since the bass of your voice doesn't have a lot of nuance to it, you want to avoid that a bit. So you want to make sure that the microphone is a little bit away from you. If you have a USB headset, you want to make sure that the, the microphone is actually a little bit higher than your nose. Order of uh, lip, tongue and nose noises. This comes back to the, the, earlier, uh, uh, the earlier bullet point about eat, drink and digest. If you eat, drink and digest, then the amount of saliva in your mouth is perfectly neutral. If you clear your nose, then that's perfectly neutral and you're fine. If you've just eaten, if you've just drunk, or if you're hungry or thirsty, your mouth is going to be too dry, it's going to be too, too, uh, too wet. You know, it's the Goldilocks problem. You want to be exactly in the middle where it's perfectly comfortable. Plosives. Plosives are sounds like they produce a lot of air, and a microphone is sensitive to pressure in the air. So when you're blowing into the microphone, you get this sudden that sounds terrible. So you want to make sure that that, uh, um, that that doesn't project into your microphone too much. Again, if you're using a USB uh, uh, headset, you move the microphone just above your nose, then it's clear of the path of air from your mouth, from your nose. You're not going to have to worry about that so much. Um, and if you're using a prop studio mic, you can get a pop filter. I'll show you what pop filters do in just a second. Breathing. Be aware of how you're breathing. Are you out of breath? Are you breathing very hard? Do you have any weird noises in your nose when you're, uh, uh, when you're inhaling or exhaling? Okay, moving swiftly along. Volume, how loud are you speaking? So uh, uh, open up with a song. The pop filter. Yeah, I'm really running through this at a, at a, at a clip because I just can't wait to get started on the recordings. Controls, plosives. This is a pop filter. It sits between you and the microphone. Uh, it makes sure that you can get really, really close to it. I like to actually have pretty much my nose is touching the, uh, um, the pop filter. Um, this is a metal one that has this interesting grate pattern. And the idea is that when there's a lot of air coming at it, when you're blowing at it with a B, D, G, K, P, or T letter, um, it creates this sort of interference pattern, which cushions the air. The other more traditional form of, uh, um, of pop filter uh, is basically like a nylon stocking stretched out. Okay, it softens the sibilance a little bit, because again, with the letter S, you do uh, breathe out a lot. Uh, it dampens exhalation. When you breathe out hard, it can also sound as a, uh, like the wind rushing past the microphone and it just looks cool. <laughs> I mean, it does, right? You see all those pictures of, of musicians and students, they've got those things. You kind of have to have one. It's only 20 euros, and it's probably a better investment than, a, than an even better microphone. All right. Just a question. Yeah. Does it take care of the German S as well? <laughs> <laughs> only the single S, not the ringlets. Editing and post-processing, very quickly. 
Um, once you have a clean recording, um, it's going to sound a little flat. It's going to sound a little thin. You're going to wonder, why doesn't this sound like those awesome people on the radio? The awesome people on the radio have all kinds of technology that they apply to amplify certain aspects of their voice, to bring out the nuance, to make sure that it can carry over the sound of, for example, traffic outside or engine noises. Um, the job of an audio engineer is to modify and adjust and shift the priorities of a vocal recording in order to suit their needs. For example, a voiceover guy for movie trailers, you want a, a very deep, very powerful voice, right? Let's take a quick look at what we can do with editing and post-processing. All right, edit out flubs. If you record for any length of time, you're, you're welcome to join us. Yep. If you record for any length of time, you're going to make mistakes, right? You're going to have to retake lines. Now, at the moment, I, I do a lot of recordings for uh, uh, readings of stories for a couple of podcasts, including the Bad Dog Book Club, run by a couple of uh, uh, very good friends of mine and editors over at Bad Dog Books. Um, it used to be that I preferred to record straight through, and then uh, whenever I, 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 I fumble the line, I just start over. And then at the end, I'd go back and I'd cut out all the, the flubbed lines. Nowadays, I actually find it more comfortable to, uh, uh, to stop the recording, rewind a little bit, and to resume recording on the spot. It, it really comes down to your personal style. On the one hand, there's a lot of editing work uh, involved if you just run straight through. You save yourself a lot of editing work but you, when you uh, uh, rewind and re-record, but you do kind of um, get out of the emotional flow. Right? It takes you out of the, the, the moment for a second. Real quickly, uh, silence pauses. When you're not speaking and there's just sort of ambient noise in the air um, during editing and post-processing, you want to silence those. You maybe want to shorten them a bit so that it sounds more tight and more urgent. And then you can apply some digital filters and pretty much every audio engineering package on Windows, on the Mac, has these, uh, uh, these filters in some form or other. You want to take noise reduction, um, there's noise all the time, and the microphone will pick it up. Like in this case, there is that that is producing this, uh, uh, this charming white noise, but there are also sounds coming from outside. Just air moving through the room can produce a constant sort of hiss that you want to get rid of. Equalization. Equalization is the process of amplifying or reducing different frequency ranges in your voice. Do you want to bring out the bass a bit more? Do you want to lower the treble? The treble is the high sounds a little bit more because it sounds too sharp. I'm not going to give any concrete advice on how to do this um, because everybody's voice is different, everybody's microphone is different. It, it, it really is something that you learn by doing. The last one is probably the most important, compression. Um, when I talk about compression, um, I don't mean that you encode something as an MP3 or as an AAC file or whatever. Um, what I mean is that soft sounds are made louder, and loud sounds are made softer. Um, I actually have the ability to show you, hopefully, the sound of bells fade. They didn't go quiet. They simply began to sound less and less gin, until they seemed like echoes, and then like the sound of a voice immediately after waking from a dream, not quite imagined, but not quite real. Did anyone hear that? <laughs> yeah, kind of, sort of. Well, that was a clean recording at the maximum volume that my iPad can produce. Now, if you look at the waveform, I've got it up here. This is a representation of that sound that you just heard. Now, when it's larger, that means it's louder. When it's smaller, that means it's softer. So the silences, they are nice and quiet. You'll see that there's no noise in there because it's such a thin line. Um, nothing reaches the maximum and minimum level, so there's no clipping, which can be a huge problem. When you're speaking too loudly, and the microphone can distinguish, you know, it, 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 it has a certain limit to the maximum loudness that it can uh, record. If you go beyond that, it sounds terrible. Uh, I don't ever do that, so I don't have any examples of that, I'm afraid. Um, but everything is fairly small, and there's a lot of nuance, which, which we like. We have peaks and valleys, um, so we know that uh, uh, there's a lot of detail captured, but it's not really coming through very clearly. So let's see what we can do if we normalize and that's the first step. Normalization scans this entire waveform. It looks for what is the highest point, right? And then it maximizes that. I'm going to take this point and I'm going to, uh, um, I'm going to increase the volume by, say, 400% of the entire waveform. Everything's going to be 400% louder because then the loudest sound on the waveform 
can hit the maximum without uh, without clipping, right? So it brings everything up to the maximum volume um, that you can produce. So let's see what that sounds like, and maybe we can actually hear it this time. The sound of bells faded. They didn't go quieter. They simply began to sound less and less genuine until they seemed like echoes, and then like the sound of a voice immediately after waking from a dream, not quite imagined, but not quite real. This is an excerpt from uh, a story called A Non-Biodegradable Fox by, uh, uh, by Not Tube, uh, which I recorded for the Bad Dog Book Club a while ago. It was a very, very good story. Notice now how the waveform has changed color. That's what happens when you normalize. <laughs> the, <laughs> the loudest peak now is all the way up to the top. It's not clipping off there, so it's the, everything has the maximum proportionate loudness. So what happens if we, we also apply compression? where we selectively look at soft sounds to make them louder, loud sounds to make them softer. The sound of bells faded. They didn't go quieter. They simply began to sound less and less genuine until they seemed like echoes, and then like the sound of a voice immediately after waking from a dream, not quite imagined, but not quite real either. Pretty good, right? <laughs> no, I mean, like, we could all hear it this time around. And this was the same sample, first with the normalization filter applied, and then with compression applied. And if you look at the, uh, the waveform now, everything is really loud. We've still got peaks and valleys, we've still got details in there, but nothing's really hovering around that, that sort of low volume. So the, the soft words have been amplified. Let's get to the acting! <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to be doing. All right, so we have all these techniques. We know about how we know about how our voice works. We know about how microphones work. We know a little bit about post-processing. So when we get in front of the microphone, what are we actually going to say? And how are we going to say it? Because voice acting, it really is performance. And even though you're not visible, even though people can only hear your voice, they can sort of intuitively feel what you're doing, what you're feeling. Um, Simply by the, the, the way your voice sounds, and it's very, very subtle. It's only very, very little clues that you're picking up. It's totally subconscious. You have no idea that you're doing it. But a good performer, a good voice actor, will actually give a proper performance in front of the microphone, uh, keeping in mind, of course, the limitations of their, uh, of their space. Yes, awesome. Um, because you'll just sound better. You'll just sound more awesome. You'll sound more emotional, you sound more convincing. Yes, welcome, come on in. If you give a proper performance. So, how do you control your expression? Use your face. It sounds ridiculous since you're only being recorded, but when you're smiling, you sound happier. When you're frowning, you sound angrier. Right? This just sort of naturally happens. Breathe harder or softer. When you're, um, when you're giving a performance, think about the emotion that you're supposed to be in in the moment. Part of the effect that you can produce when you're trying to convince someone that you're that you're angry or that you're in a hurry comes from how hard are you breathing. That's why I was talking about the uh, the different styles of breathing earlier. Whether it comes from your diaphragm because you're relaxed, whether it comes from your chest because you're urgent. Tighten or loosen your abs. That's the other aspect of that. When you tighten your stomach, you just sound tighter. There's, it sounds like there's more power. You sound more masculine as well. And when you relax, you can sound more peaceful and more at ease and more gentle. And again, ignore your hands because they're your fucking enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to yourself. This is a very important one. When you're recording, um, you want to wear a pair of good headphones, preferably ones that dampen all the sounds. Sorry, not headphones, cans. In the industry, they're, not, they're known as cans. So when you go to somebody's studio, always make a compliment and say, what a nice set of cans you have there. <laughs> Lean forward to speak softly. This is really counterintuitive, so just fucking practice that. When you start, when you want to speak softly, you have to lean forward so the microphone captures more of your volume. And by contrast, step back to speak loudly. Really counterintuitive, because when you're trying to be angry, when you're trying to be engaged, when you're trying to be emotional, you want to step forward, you want to confront this person, especially when you're giving an expressive performance. But you can't do that, because it's just a stupid microphone, and you'll overload it if you stand too close. So you need to step back. <laughs> yeah, know your environment. <laughs> okay, let's very briefly talk about accents and dialects. Yeah, you're kind of on your own. It's such, it's such a broad subject, there is such nuance, there is so much to talk about. We're, we're not going to do that here, so 
Just kind of, kind of do your best. I mean, you know, you are seriously on your own. So good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, I can talk a little bit about it. Okay, we can talk a little bit about it. Um, we've all heard people doing funny voices. Some of us can do some very good funny voices. Um, but a really good and convincing accent, when you're trying to produce that, it comes from very, very carefully and analytically listening to speakers of that accent. Different dialects, even within one language, the same goes for German, the same goes for English, um, they have very subtle... They sound different because they speak different. Uh, an example is the American accent, or I should say the American group of accents, um, is characterized by the use of lateralized vowels, where you pull the corners of your lips out when you pronounce a vowel. Now this is kind of counterintuitive when you've been educated in British received pronunciation, which is pronounced round and forward. British accent, no, I'm serious. British people on the, uh, uh, the British Isles, and this includes Scots, Irish, and to a lesser degree Welsh, their cheeks are kind of relaxed when they're speaking. Everything happens in their, uh, in their lips, everything happens in their jaw, but Americans, they do a lot more with their cheeks. They pull it out, they smile more when they're talking. Right? It's not only it's not only the face where uh, where this stuff happens. It's also the intonation. Like Australians, they'll try to deny it, but they have this thing where they pronounce every sentence as if it's a question, even though it isn't, and they'll do it over and over and over. And oh no, it's terrible. So <laughs> listen, listen to what these people are saying. Try to find what it is that makes them so unique. And that just it takes study. It takes time. Um, and to talk about, you know, how to speak like an American, how to speak like an Australian, or like a German bad guy from Die Hard, that's a topic in itself. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do that next year. How to sound like a bad guy from Die Hard. Just go for it. I think this is the most important piece of advice that I can give, especially since we're going to be doing some audience participation in just a second. Just fucking go for it. Don't be ashamed. Nobody can see your stupid face, so make a stupid face. If that helps you express, do it. Here, you can always edit it later. You can always fix it in post. It's fine. Just, just get out there and do it, because if you don't, you'll sound like a pussy. <laughs> and we don't want that. This brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, I would actually like to invite our uh, uh, esteemed special guest here to maybe, do you have anything to add that you'd like to convey from your own personal experience? Well, everything that you've said up to now makes perfect sense. And everything That's that very nice to hear. Now, <laughs> <laughs> what we've been using for, uh, for Peter Lake, for instance, as well, um, culminating everything into what it says here. Uh, speak up, would you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> as the Indians would say, we need more polyum. Oh, right. I'm so sorry. Um, this is what it's all about. Hide your shame. It's hard to do because you feel like you're not in your eyes. But do it. Just nobody's gonna see you. It's the only and the best advice that Alex just gave you and that I'm gonna give you as well. Fucking do it. If you are a German bad guy, you will be a German bad guy. <laughs> just picture yourself as the asshole in Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, but his face melted. That was exactly. Picture yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yourself before that moment. <laughs> if you picture yourself at that moment, it doesn't matter because nobody will see your stupid face anyway. <laughs> Even if it melts. If you do a recording, it's what Alex said. It's your personal preference if you do it in one go, or if you do it in separate little bits. Um, what we did for Bitter Lake, we did the we, we, we took the script and I told the actor to read the same line three times, but add nuances to those lines. So in one go, he uh, put the stress on the first two words, and then on the second go, he put the last word, and on the third go, he put it on the on the first word. Um, that allowed us to listen to it and take the whole of the line and take little bits and make it sound realistic because all the actors uh, did not see each other while recording. So every single actor was recorded on a single day but on a different location. So they, they had no way of interacting with each other. And I personally think that we did a great job in that he didn't know that. 
and that sounded like they were talking to each other. I think you did a great job. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Didn't he do a great job? <laughs> and that, can, that advice is what I want to give you as well. You can be two characters, and you can talk to yourself without basically talking to yourself. <laughs> you record it, you listen to it, you record it again, listen to it, and then you switch character. It takes a while, but you can do it. And the best thing, or one tip that I want to give you, is give the person in your head, the person that you have to portray, a little weird thing. Um, BBF asked me to do Spikey for, for the uh, introduction, and he asked me to rap, which was like, what the fuck do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> that little guy has a nervous little in his voice. And every time I go, I'm going to start like, I'm going to talk like Spidey. That little thing in my head makes me go to that character. And I become that character and I forget the shame of being standing like that. <laughs> I stand in front of my microphone because I don't like to, I, I'm hunched. So if I sit down, all the air goes down here. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I can try to stand up and start to open myself up and I look like a tit. <laughs> we all do. I read, yeah. Uh, I put a camera down, I looked at it and thought, am I going to use this for the making of? Hell no! <laughs> <laughs> I had other people I could put in the making of. <laughs> um, I did bring some, um, some outtakes. That did you manage to get the speaker working? Yes, I did. Excellent. Let's turn this guy off so he's making a whole bunch of noise and we don't need it's, it's not much because it, most of the things went right. But <laughs> some of the things, as you will hear, um, I wrote the lines and I basically did everything myself trying to see if it was pronounceable. For me it worked, but for the actor it didn't. So here's a, um, a failed bit. Sorry for interrupting. Ah, sorry for interrupting. I will leave. It comes in a bit. Ah. ah, sorry for interrupting. I will leave. No, now that you mention it, it comes. I haven't seen her since she strode out of here last night. No, now that you mention it, I haven't seen her since she. <laughs> no, no, now that you mention it, I haven't seen her since she, since she stroked. <laughs> no, now that you mention it, I haven't seen her since she This is the most it is possible. No. Now that you mention it, I haven't seen her since she strode. No, now that you mention it, I haven't seen her since she struck. <laughs> this is what it became. No, now that you mention it, I haven't seen her since she ran off. <laughs> There's, there's one other little thing that um, we had to do silly voices and silly sounds and people dying and gurgling and all that sort of shit. Um, and there was one thing that went wrong, uh, which sounds like what I call the question effect of a pregnant goat. <laughs> I'm sorry, one more time? The pregnant effect of a... Uh, the, uh, the weird effect of a pregnant goat. Oh, yes, obviously. Let's... <laughs> We use it in the movie as well. <laughs> when um, I hope you guys saw it, otherwise I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, when Prince Arden dies, 
or cuts himself on the dagger. Spoiler! <laughs> I'm what? sorry. We all went and saw it yesterday, didn't we? Yeah. 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 When he cuts himself on the dagger, the colonel turns around and makes the pregnant goat. <laughs> and um, we thought it was cool to use it. So this is. Oh, turn that. Mmm. <laughs> 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 That's what I wanted to share, that not everything goes according to plan. Thank you very much! Alright, so now the part that you've all been dreading. What I have here is two portable recording studios. This is it. This is all the recording equipment we have. No fancy microphone, not even a pop filter. Um, this is what we're going to use. I've written a little script, which obviously is themed to, uh, um, to the Kung Fu Hustle kind of theme. So it's, uh, you know what? You're not getting any description. I'm just going to put this in the hands of the first two volunteers. Who would like to play the Kung Fu Master? All right, we have a volunteer for the Kung Fu Master. Oh boy. Come over here, please. There's, a, there's already a guy in there. Yeah, well, anyway. What? I want to be volunteer as well. Uh, well, would you like to play the hero of the story, Lucky Gold Star? <laughs> <laughs> I thought about calling him Toshiba. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Is that my little play? <laughs> I was literally, three days ago, I was sitting in my house and I was trying to think of a name for this guy. And our television is made by LG. LG stands for Lucky Gold Star. So that that became what it is. There's your lines. This is your this is your page. Could you please each say your names before you start recording? Because it's already recording, so that you know who you are. My name's Shiro. Shiro, nice to meet you. Are you are glamorous. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I've never done this before, just like many of them, so I don't know how it will. Uh, don't worry, we'll just judge you critically, and uh, at the end I would like everyone to just sort of stare in silence at them until they go away. Yes? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the Kung Fu Master and Lucky Gold Star. Put down on those heavy buckets, Lucky Gold Star. It is time I told you of your magnetic past. Kung Fu Master, since I was a cub, when you rescued me from my family's burning ranch, you told me I could not know of my enigmatic past until I came of, I, until I came of age. It is true that your training is incomplete, like the old stuff, but your net past will soon catch up. Tell me more, Kung Fu Master. It was not a bizarre chopstick robbing accident that caused the family to ranch to burn down, as you may have been told. But my sister loved. Interest still carries the guilt of that horrible day. She weaves her way through every meal. Love interest is not your sister, Lucky Gold Star. She is daughter of your arch nemesis, the head of rival, whose spies within your household caused the fire. Arch nemesis had only fathered one daughter before his wife joined. <laughs> before she strolled out of the room. <laughs> No, you guys aren't done yet. Because that was actually a bit rubbish, I thought. I think you can do way, way better. So here's a couple of things I want you to do. All right, stand up straight and face the audience. Bring the, up, bring the iPad up higher, bring it toward you. You can hold it in one hand. You know, you've only got this one. Hey, it's gone again. Don't push the buttons, man. <laughs> Here we go. Push the buttons. Push the buttons. Would you like me to be your stand and hold the thing so you can move freely? Thank you. Yes, master. There is a camera over there. It is in HD. Just. Oh. just <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, <I'm> wrong way. <laughs> so remember, the last slide that I put up there. Just go for it. Right. Put more emotion into it. 
Express yourself more and provide us with more volume. <laughs> one thing, it's going off after a while if I don't touch it. That's fine. You can okay. you can touch it. Just not the buttons. <laughs> right. So we're going to be louder. We're going to be more expressive. Okay. We're going to connect with the audience. Yeah. I do. Yes. All right. Once more with feeling. <clears throat> Put down those heavy buckets, lucky gold star. It's time I told you of your next task. Kung Fu Master, since I was a cat, when you rescued me from my family's burning ranch, you told me I did not know of my enigmatic past <laughs> until I came of age. It is true that your age is incomplete, Lucky Gold Star, but I... You are enigmatic past. <laughs> enigmatic past. She enigmatic. strode out of the room into her enigmatic past. <laughs> enigmatic. Enigmatic. enigmatic past. Enigmatic past. Split the word up. Mysterious past. <laughs> Mysterious past. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Try yeah. sounding like a North Samurai. Yeah. A North oh, Samurai? Oh, samurai? <laughs> okay. 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 Now you're gonna laugh at me. I guess. Yes, yes. yes of course. What's your name? Say your name. So we don't... Ne next year. Next year. Next year. Next year. Next year. Next year. No, no, no. You're saying it to the iPad so they know. Next year. We're gonna start all over again. Yeah. Right from the right from the top. Right from the top. And again, we're going to address the audience because the audience—they are our friends. They love us. Why? It doesn't. Three, two, one. Put down the heavy gold buckets, lucky gold star. It is time I told you your enigmatic past. <laughs> Kung Fu Master, since I was a cat, when you rescued me from my family's burning ranch, you told me I did not know of my enigmatic past until I came of age. It is true that your training is incomplete, lucky gold star, but your enigmatic past will soon catch up with you. Tell me more, Kung Fu Master. Was not a bizarre chopstick rubbing accident that caused your family's ranch to burn down, as you may have been told. But my sister love, interest still carries the guilt of that horrible date. She weeps her way through every meal. <sighs> love interest is not your sister, Magical Star. She is the daughter of Arch Nemesis, the head of a rival clan whose spies within your household caused the fire. Arch Nemesis had only fathered one daughter before his wife joined that pirate ship and left him. Like in an air, he knew what uh, he knew that meant the end of his name. So he set his child adrift on the river and killed your family to add their land to his own. That that seems needlessly complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. That's fine, that's fine, don't worry about it. All right, what did we think? <coughs> I feel honored. <laughs> Shogun Master and Luke Skywalker. Shogun Master and Luke Skywalker. Well, basically, I mean, I like the, I like the classics. Um, I, uh, uh, I held a writing panel at Further Confusion in 2008 at one point, and we did this really, I wanted to do this sort of funky thing, it was about the fundamental story, and I wanted to show how the hero's journey, you know, the fundamental story of a young man, basically the story of puberty, uh, which we have told throughout the centuries, over and over again, how it was so fundamental to our culture. So I told the story of Star Wars and the Lord of the Rings at the same time. It worked really, really well. Um, would you have any advice for the volunteers that we've had so far? Um. It's very tough to read something that you're reading for the very first time. So uh, when Alex told you uh, to do it, the best thing you could have said was, one moment, I'm going to read the lines first. Yes. Um, I had to laugh, and I'm very sorry. Uh, where are you? Um, yeah. Up there. 
Uh, one of the characters is called Love Interest. Yes, I, I didn't see that. Exactly. I, I didn't know it was a name, so yeah. I just started Love Interest. Yeah. <laughs> didn't get that. That's what you get when you do uh, voice acting. You have to basically read ahead of the lines if you're not allowed to read the script beforehand. And that's tough. It's really, really tough. But try and be three words ahead. I actually tried, but I still didn't get the meaning of the, of the sentence it, the first time. So it's your first time, so yes. it's not a problem. But I mean, you can teach yourself to do that by just reading the line over and over and over again. I'm one of the people that, if I fuck up at the end of a very long line, I do the whole thing over again. Because I want to be in the same uh, voice line. So it is tough, <coughs> and you will screw up. Just do it again. I mean, for this room here, uh, it's basically for for fun and to try and get you to, to get to that point where you go like, I want to keep doing this. Uh, that's uh, the tips that I had. I, I liked your uh, your accent. Uh, <laughs> the constipated samurai. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was that was scene one. Um, that that was uh, that was page one. We have a couple more. Uh, let me just make sure that this screen doesn't turn off because then the next person is going to have to push a button and that's never going to turn out right. So... And they'll find your porn. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there is quite a lot on here, to be honest. If the reflection on his face turns pink, you need <laughs> <laughs> If you see, like, a little lion coming here, it's too boob or something. <laughs> <laughs> or buttons, whatever. All right, all right. Steady on. Jesus. <laughs> We've, uh, we've got a little time left. So, in scene two, now, during the first scene, we had uh, um, Kung Fu Master and Lucky Star <coughs> talking about his enigmatic past, and we're very, very curious what happened. <laughs> <laughs> but now, we're going to follow the, the, um, the sister, Love Interest. Outside, Love Interest and Expendable Servant see riders approaching <laughs> the undisclosed mountain location where the story is taking place. All right. So who would like to play Love Interest? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, since you're a girl, I believe, you actually can. <laughs> you never know. This isn't an insult. I'm just covering my bases. All right. <laughs> come she's here, come the, here, please. Come here. Like, 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 she like, like, balls are up high. Yeah, she's yeah. like one of the guys, except her balls are a bit higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no. Awesome. I, 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 oh, by the way, um, you don't necessarily have to be a woman to do a woman's voice. As you will Demonstrate? see. Demonstrate? You will get a demonstration later on. Do we really want to know? Yes, we do. <laughs> Stay on. Okay. Yeah, um, exactly. yeah. I need two other people, even though we only have one one iPad. So we'll need expendable servant. <laughs> <laughs> As you say, my lord. All right. Have a look at that. And a character that hasn't been introduced yet, called Douche Canoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get the title. Oh, only because he's over there. Only because what's over the uh, food pads over there? I want you to read lines with them. All right, come here. <laughs> so what's going to happen is uh, we're going to have love interest and expendable servant talking. Then love interest is going to go away, and expendable servant is going to meet douche canoe. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> are you douche canoe or my douche? Uh, no, you're, you're expendable servant. So <clears throat> you're going to have a conversation with yes. with love interest. Bring it, bring it closer over here, there's more light people can see. <coughs> <coughs> Alright. <coughs> what do you say? Your, your <coughs> names, please. Your names, please. Luminare. Hello, iPad. <laughs> Footpad. Shoelace. <laughs> Welcome. Speak at least. At this one. Hello, I'm Shoelace. <laughs> Thanks. I have to edit this shit later on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, love interest and expandable servant. Are you are you prepared? Have you had a look at the lights? Yeah. Are you sure that she can stroll into the room? No. <laughs> it's very big, very fast. <laughs> All right. In your own time. Now. Riders are approaching. Expandable servant. They carry the banner of arch nemesis. We must run. Come to master at once. You must go, Miss Love Interest. I will go to the captain of the guard, Douche Canoe. You. I keep thinking 
thinking about paddling my douche <laughs> Take the line again, take the line again. Okay. <laughs> breathe, breathe. Sorry. <clears throat> well, I'm right now. More. You must go, Miss Lovely Christ. I will go to the captain of the. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not funny. <laughs> it's serious. Yeah, I don't know the douche. No, I'm happy with the douche. You must go, Miss Lovely Christ. I will go to the captain of the guard, Dushkanu. He will help me close the gates. Your heart is pure and noble, expendable servant. <laughs> Your sixteen children must be very proud of you. By the way, there was a letter for you last week about your life insurance experience. No. About your about life? About your life insurance ex expiring. Expiring. About your life insurance expiring. Again? Or no. shall I just go ahead? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go now! Warn Kung Fu Master and your sexually ambiguous brother! At once! <laughs> <laughs> okay, take it. Alright, alright. Go ahead. Go for it. Captain Dushkanu, Arch Nemesis approaches. We must close the gate. Only your brave yet often questionable leadership can defend us from the soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> and only my traitorous dagger can stop you in the throat. <laughs> my blood. <laughs> Indeed. All. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Love you very it. much. <laughs> this is what I mean. Um, that one's gay, that one's French. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean about opening up? See what I mean about making stupid faces? When you have the balls, no matter how high or how low they are. <laughs> no man, no worries. Don't mind it. Now you can give a great performance. All right. We have another page. This we're, we're halfway through, and on this next page, this is back in the courtyard of Kung Fu Master's undisclosed mountain location. Now, Love Interest has run back to warn Kung Fu Master, while Expendable Servant has been murdered by the captain of the guard, Dushknu. She doesn't know this yet, so what is she going to find in the courtyard? And this scene, I'm going to need a different Love Interest, please, and we'll have another Lucky Gold Star. Now, here we... This is going to be quite an emotional scene, right? So we want people with uh, uh, a lot of experience in delivering something truly emotional. Who's ready? All right. Real drama, sir. Do we want him to be <laughs> love interest or lucky gold star? Love, 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 love interest. Love interest. Okay, you're going to be love interest. Okay. Who, somebody pointed somebody else to play lucky gold star. <laughs> we'll make it. We'll make it consensus. Okay. Who? You. Who's going to do it? Who's going to? No, 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 no. I'm going to. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, this democracy thing is not working. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bring it in here. What are you putting on lipstick? He's putting on lipstick. Putting on lipstick. Yes. <laughs> 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 lipstick. Getting into character. I like it. Grab your recording devices. Please say your names. <laughs> ah, Griffin. Mm. No, your name is not in the script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your script right there. So say your name, please. Your name is not in the script! <laughs> okay, you're, you're, you're with Riyadh soon. Riyadh, okay, awesome. Uh, you're playing Love Interest, and you're playing Lucky Gold Star. Alright. And remember, tears, we want the emotion, we want everything. Bring it. Kung Fu Master, Arch Nemesis is... What did Gold Star? What happened here? It was Arch Nemesis Tozer's Princess Love Interest. They came through the secret tunnels. We fought them off. But Kung Fu Master's undignous, they obeyed his claim at him. He died in my arms. There must be a traitor in the compound. Why did you call me Princess? Before he died, Kung Fu Master told me of my 
Mysterious. Mysterious. Mysterious mess. You and I will rest as brother and sister. But you are the daughter of Arch Nemesis. And it was he who killed my parents. That's needlessly complicated. <laughs> you are not wrong. Over then Kung Fu Master and I only one man knew of the secret tunnels. You are right, Princess of Interest. We were betrayed by none other than Captain Dutch Kenner. What an asshole! Come, lucky gold star. Arch nemesis will soon reach the gate. We must escape. But he killed Kung Fu Master. I must avenge him. No, we must avenge him. Now you have told me about my enigmatic... <laughs> my mysterious past. <laughs> What's so hard about I suddenly remember the valley where I was born. Come, lucky gold star. I will lead you to Arch Nemesis's stronghold. Thank you very much. I did not wash my hands. Oh. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. The very last scene. If you have, by the way, a shitty word like enigmatic, and you keep fumbling over it, split the word in two. Oh, anic. 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 Manic. You sound like a frog. <laughs> and you can fix it in pops. <laughs> but you can remove the pause between yeah. manic, manic, like, and then it's anic manic. <laughs> well, yeah. that's a very old kung fu master. It is. It is a very old kung fu master. I think that's a trick that a lot of people who have a stammer have to use as well yep. in order to help them make it through the. Why am I sitting down? We're not done yet. We're not done yet. We have one more scene. Oh, and this is a good one. This is where we finally meet the villain of the story, Arch Nemesis. And he's going to be having a conversation with, again, Douche Canoe. So, for Arch Nemesis, we're looking for someone who's very grand, who's very pompous. Wow. Uh, okay. Bring it on, bring it on, keep sir. Because you look really grand and pompous. And I want to take this other gentleman over here. Uh, yes, you don't don't trust this eye. It does weird things. This eye is the one that speaks the truth. Please come forward. Um, uh, and this is uh, Douche Canoe. Don't forget to say your name to the iPad. Uh, yes. Introduce yourselves to the iPad, please. Yeah, I'm Cap Sandra. Kitty Fox. You have done well, Douche Canoe. As I promised, I see it that you are rewarded for your treachery. Has Kung Fu Master been eliminated? Yes, Lord Arch Nemesis. The men you sent into the secret tunnel surprised him and triggered his undiagnosed diabetes. Just as I planned. And what about that cursed whelp, Lucky Goldstar? And that twice cursed daughter of mine? Oh, uh, well, no, see, the thing is. I should have known not to trust such an important task to you. Take me to them so that I can have an awesome jewel with Lucky Gold Star. They're not here, Lord Arch Nemesis. The fuck you say? They were last seen riding to the valley of your stronghold. You moonbrain shit! I should kill you for such a failure. But wait! There's more, isn't there? I can see it in your beady little eyes. My lord! Princess Love Interest took all the chopsticks! <laughs> <laughs> That was particularly good. I really <laughs> liked the expression. You were very brave. You were very bold. Well done, guys. <laughs> We've actually made it through this um, a little quicker than I anticipated. Look, Alex, I have a question. Uh, here we did uh, voice acting. We the both actors. They are here. But uh, I think it did a little quite bad. The the actors recorded the, of their part separated. I think. Uh, w what do you think of this? Of doing it, the both have, I saw uh, behind the scenes from the the fantastic Mr. Fox and mm -hmm. George Clooney, the other actors made in a house. They both acted in a house in only Meryl Streep. 
that uh, voice separated. And I thought that she was kind of uh, off of the rest of the, mm. of the crew. It, it does always sound more natural when, uh, um, when everyone's actually having a conversation, but that's surprisingly rare. Um, even in animated movies, generally they'll be recorded separately because it is an awful lot of work, it is very, very lonely, and with the right technique, as Shay has explained, you can, you're going to need multiple takes anyway, you're going to need to mix and match anyway, um, and so very often it's just more practical to record separately, but then the burden is on the actor uh, to give multiple versions of a performance so that the sound engineer and the editor afterward can sort of try and fit them together, and that's really hard work. It also depends on what you are recording for. Um, for what we did was, um, there was only one scene in Bitter Lake where all four characters were talking to each other. Uh, we could have chosen to record that together, but seeing we had a voice artist in, um, in Great Britain and the other two in Holland, we couldn't match the schedules together, so that kind of snucked it up. Um, but if you have friends together, I would suggest personally, if you have the time to do it, go together. Because you can interact with each other, make it more natural. Don't go over the top, depending on what you're doing. If you're doing a movie or you're doing a television something, um, don't go over the top. If you're doing theater, add that little extra. Are there any secret tips to, if you don't have a studio time, you just have basic recording, uh, microphone and uh, recorder, and you always, I always always have the problem of the rooms having too much. Um, that is a great, so. great Are there question. Any, any low cost tips to make yeah. uh, the room uh, sound neutral? Yeah, yeah. That's and I, I guess try not to sit in a big room. Well, no, no, no. You can still have a fairly big room. I have a fairly big room, and it, it works out okay. Probably the, the, enough to the, afford wall cards. So. No, I know. So plushies, lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. Having lots of plushies on racks against the wall directly behind you, <coughs> magic. Um, in my home studio, it actually sounds pretty good. I have a very close uh, um, uh, positioning to the microphone, so it's kind of intimate, but the room is very large, right? And it's bare concrete walls. Um, but we have, our, uh, we have our wardrobe, our clothes cabinet, behind, directly behind me, so I open the doors on that, right? And that, just the fact that there's so much textile, that there's so much fluff going on, uh, it really dampens the room, so that is a very cheap way. Just make a mess. It, there's there's also um, something that I use. I, I sit in a smaller room, and it still re reverbs constantly, which fucked up some of the recordings for Bitter Lake. Hmm. And I fix that by being silly and taking a sheet, putting the sheet over my head, over my monitor, with a microphone in the middle, so I look like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was cut off. Make sure that if you do that, that you put something like a huge mouse mat or, or something of a, a sheet or a pillow underneath your microphone. Not that it goes like that because that makes the microphone unstable, but that uh, the sound can only go into the microphone and it doesn't bounce off everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the cheapest way of how I fixed uh, reverb or echo. It's a very good question. But his is a lot more comfortable, I can tell you. Yes, and there's less chance of the sheet catching on fire because you put it over the heat vents of the computer. Yes. <laughs> no, no, don't put it over your computer because that will echo the, the sound of the fans in that little room. I put oh, yeah. it over my monitor. Uh, the further away your computer is from the microphone, the better. Uh, I put a, um, uh, yeah, I put a sleeping bag over the fan of the computer for some recordings and then forgot to take it off. And then I came back and my computer was gone. Like, uh, yeah. Hmm. It was off, it overheated. Oops. Watch out for fire. Yeah. Um, it's, it's scary, scary stuff. What's the best method to get rid of the clicking noises um, made by, by Salva when I'm speaking for a long time? I, I have to have a cup of tea uh, at my table and, and have a sip uh, every once in a while. But is there any other tip, any honey or something like that, any ingredient you can add to release those clicking noises? Um, it, it really depends on your own mouth biology. It's, it's, very, it's very subjective. Some people, they like to add a little uh, uh, lemon to their tea, personally. Um, I don't drink during the recording. I make sure that, you know, I, I, I do that uh, uh, at least 20 minutes before I start recording so that everything has a chance to level out. Um, because when you drink during recording, sure, okay, it, it rehydrates your mouth, but it also thins out your saliva. 
so it gets between your teeth, it gets between your lips, it's, it's, it's in the corners of your lips, and it's in all these little places where it can bubble up and, uh, uh, and make noises. But it, it, it really depends on your personal... Uh, occasionally I find it helpful, you shouldn't smoke, but I do, so occasionally I find it helpful to, to, to light up a cigarette. Um, Generally, a Cretec rather than a regular cigarette. Cretecs contain cloves, which contain eutanol, which is a topical anesthetic, and it's a muscle relaxant. Um, whereas regular tobacco tends to tighten up your, uh, your lungs a bit more. So regular tobacco I wouldn't recommend. Cloves, it can work for you. But Speaking of tea, if I may. Uh, as an English person, you may indeed speak of tea. <laughs> Um, chocolate, tea, coffee, I've heard it said that these things t tighten the throat, tense the muscles, and re reduce your facility of expression. And I've heard it recommended against them. Uh, yeah, I've heard that as well. The, 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 the flip side of that is they are warm, uh, which can make you quite comfortable. That can open up your, uh, uh, your chest. It really is a matter of, like, if you find that it works for you, then go for it. If you find that it doesn't work for you, then, uh, uh, then don't. What is your preferred... Uh, depending on how much you're going to stress your vocal cords mm -hmm. for the the part that you're going to play, uh, for me, if it's more like a <laughs> sounds that you have to make a lot, I use lukewarm water with a uh, squirt of lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Not a, not a fresh lemon because cutting in this. Yep. One of those little bottles where you can squirt some out. Uh, mix it, not too much, because you turn like this, and then you have a silly face, but your voice will reflect that as well. <laughs> so just the right mixture. Uh, the lemon works for your uh, for your vocal cords, um, and it helps you relax a little, and it also gets you a little drunk. A, a little drunk? Yes, it does. It's what? really weird. But right. Too much of it will go, ooh. Can I have more of some of your lemon juice, then? <laughs> Mine doesn't do that. It's okay. I'll give you some. <laughs> um, a lot of the time, the, uh, the amount of saliva in your mouth depends on the, uh, the humidity of the air in your room. So if you found that your mouth is dry, you may be in a very dry environment, you might want to open up the window and let in some fresh air. Uh, or conversely, you might want to close all the doors and uh, uh, let the room cool down a bit before you do your, uh, do your recording. So many factors come into play, there's no one single secret trick that anyone uh, that anyone uses. It really is a matter of trying out a lot of different things and learning to know your body a little bit better, right? What are the qualities of your voice in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, or say at 3 p.m. in Germany after a really, really long bender in the bar? <laughs> um, and, and practice, 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 practice. And think about what you're doing. Think about what you have done. Listen back to your, your voice. Um, it really is about learning to know what you're capable of, what you're comfortable with, and recognizing those patterns so you can anticipate them. So that the next time that you give a performance, you know what you need to do in order to clear your throat, clear your nose, to, to present yourself, to make yourself calm, rested, and, and at ease, uh, so that you can give a good performance. What uh, software do you recommend for post-processing? That's an interesting question. Um, what did you guys use for uh, Better Lake? I downloaded Audacity uh, for Windows. It was still in beta uh, at the time. I think it's still in beta now. Yeah. Um, Audacity is free. The good thing about Audacity is A, it's free. B, it doesn't use a lot of your system resources. And C, it has a noise reduction filter that uh, you could select a tiny bit of the sample select it and then covers the whole thing and every little noise is gone. And so it analyzes that little that little sample yeah. for which kind of frequencies. Exactly. Which kind of and then you go like the whole thing and then it applies the whole filter to the sample. And that removes ninety nine percent of every sound until you export it to whatever compression and then that little bit that's left gets boosted up a bit. So don't expect if you have a, um, the raw file will be completely clean, but the exported file will have a bit of hmm. rough edges into it. And then any um, program that you're going to use for whatever it's going to be used in can dampen that again. So there's, it goes up and down a bit. But Audacity worked for me. And does it have a compression filter as well? Yes. Normalization it has a, compression it has a little st standard filters, and uh, uh, the best thing about it has an equalizer as well, so you can minutely tweak the things that you don't want in it. Uh, it, it, it helped me a lot. Yeah. Um, a lot of 
people who do voice acting and podcasts, they use uh, they use Audacity partly because it's free, um, it's cross-platform. Um, as a Mac user, I prefer to use GarageBand, which comes free with every uh, every Mac. Now, about three or four years ago, they introduced some podcasting features, which were uh, which were quite handy. Since then, the focus has been more on generating music, but it has some of it has some of the finest and easiest and most convenient uh, audio editing um, workflow. Because pretty much any piece of decent wave editing software is going to have uh, a compression filter, a normalization filter, the basics that you need. Um, Audacity has a really good noise filter, but you may not need that so much if you can produce a very clean recording. Um, and since I spend most of my time, see, no worries, um, I have one sort of template that I've set up for, for most of the readings that I do because I've, I've, I've tweaked a, the, the, uh, the equalization, the compression, right? I know what my performance sounds like because I do it all in the same room with the same microphone. Um, I have myself ready to give a to give a performance, so I know what's going to come out of it. And I can just apply that template to every single recording that I do, and then just tweak it maybe a little bit if it's supposed to be a funny voice. Um, so the most work is in the actual editing. So I've looked at a lot of different pieces of software to find which one saves me the most clicks, because any time that I have to cut out a flubbed line or style on something. Uh, is it going to take four clicks to the mouse, or you know, a, a keystroke and two clicks? Which one saves me the most time? How do I get through it faster? Uh, with the with GarageBand, I've got a little uh, uh, track plan, trackpad next to my uh, uh, next to my keyboard because I've got a bit of RSI. But I like the fact that I can zoom in and out with the uh, the touch gestures to either very rapidly track through the uh, the entire recording and because I do story readings they can be you know two hour sessions two hour long files um, so I can go either through them very quickly or I can really really zoom in on where I just missed the enigmatic past <laughs> or where she strolled into the room <laughs> um, so on a Mac I would recommend GarageBand but uh, Audacity is also a very very good alternative um, one thing that I one thing that I kind of don't like about Audacity, but maybe that's just my lack of understanding, I like to work non-destructively. And that means I want to have my raw file, right, the raw recording, and then everything, the, uh, uh, the edits, the, uh, bless you, um, the, the edits, the, the, the compression, all the filters, that all of those are soft, as in uh, they're not applied to the master file. I don't have to export until I'm ready to, to, uh, uh, to actually master the, uh, the recording. Does Audacity requires you to save as a WAV file, right? No, no, no. No? No. Okay, it excellent. So it, it saves a project it file. It saves a project file. Okay, then I stand corrected. But I, um, every time you do apply something, uh, it's just a standard tip, save as a different project. Because if you make a, a, what I call a boo-boo, you can always go back. <laughs> uh, yeah, backup, 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 backup. Back up, back up, back up. Just keep on backing up. Are you getting this? Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. This is probably much better advice than anything in the presentation. You want to say it with me? Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Thank you very much. Can we just save some time using automatic backup, back up? Back up, back up, back up, yeah. Because then you won't have to spend time actually doing it. I have one other tip when it comes down to eating. Eat before, but avoid lettuce. Cucumber, onion, garlic, salami. <laughs> because if you are recording, even 20 minutes later, um, or something smoked as well, like smoked salmon or mackerel, uh, you get a chance that it will burp. <laughs> yeah. And I fucked up three of the Paw Pad Show recordings. I had to save the People's Republic's most anticipated project. Even now it's blah, blah, blah. It I thought it was very People's smart. Republic. <laughs> and I had to do the whole thing again. And that happened to me three times. <laughs> so keep in mind that all the stuff that you eat, which doesn't go well with your stomach, know what you uh, what you eat. Yeah. Don't eat that if you have to do uh, a recording. Know yourself. Yep. Any other questions? Is there any way to well, if you do recordings and you don't finish in a day and you have to pick up on another day or even do. Mm. Over the course of a few days, if you don't have time to do the last week. Are there any tips to um, 
need the sound of your voice from the day before because that's the yeah. problem. You get the volume. It's it's very recording. tricky. It is it is really tricky because you can listen back to what you've recorded, but what you're listening to is what the microphone recorded and what's coming out of the speaker. It's not it's not you. Um, I tend to try and schedule things around the same time of day. Um, if I know that I'm not going to finish a recording, um, I'm really controlling about my posture, right? I make sure that I don't move around a lot, that I'm conscious, that it, uh, as exact measurements as I can get, I like to put the pop filter right up against my nose. I leave the, the microphone in the same position. It's, 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 it's really obsessive and really sort of anal retentive, but it's so hard to recreate the sound from, from yesterday because the sound that you produce, the, the sort of the quality of your, your performance, it changes as you're giving the performance, as you're getting more tired, as your mouth is getting drier. Um, I've never successfully managed to, to sort of flawlessly do it. I keep, I've, I've been getting closer and closer, um, but still, generally, I try to avoid it as much as possible because I can't get it right. Have you? It's, it's tricky. I guess maybe if you had uh, uh, like a proper studio, a totally silenced room, but even then, like, You've been having different conversations. You're in a different emotional state. Um, maybe you've smoked a bit too much or too little the, the, the previous day, and you're, you know, your 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 muscles are in different states of relaxation or tension. The eight garlic. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't really help you out on that one because I haven't I haven't mastered it either. So. Generally, I try to, to, to get through it in a day, and if that means a three-hour recording session, um, then preferably I do that. Try to do that in the middle of the night when it's uh, when it's quiet outside um, to just get it over with. It's really tough. All I can say is same here. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. Um, do you have any tips for lip syncing uh, your voice to an image, moving it to a moving image? Because I saw yesterday in the movie, you did the voice order. You did yeah. first, you first recorded the voices and then you did the acting with the voices sounding, which I found quite clever because you didn't have to worry about uh, then matching the voices and the dialogue with, with, uh, with the moving of the muscles. Um, but mostly when you have to do something, when you have to voice over, for example, something, uh, when you have to dab something, yeah. especially since I'm from Spain and I, I want to dab something from English to Spain, I do the translation and everything. But then when I have to dub it, if, if I have to dub it, um, do you have any tips for that? Do you have any recommendations <coughs> or do you have any experience? I think that, that Shay can actually tell you quite a bit about that because if you'll notice, what they were doing was lip syncing those uh, uh, those performers, those performers in the in the in the bodysuit. They were listening to the recordings that are being produced, and they had to their their expression, their personal mimic, their, uh, uh, their mind, but also their muscles had to be synchronized to that. So, how did they go about that? How did they train for that? Um, the, the the hardest part is the translation itself into uh, a different language. I mean, if you take uh, an English line and you translate that to French. The, the, the words go whoosh. and if you tra translate them back to Spanish, the words go whoosh, because they have different and longer words. Now, if a character in a cartoon uh, mimes the words "fuck you" in in, in English, and uh, in, in I don't even know what it's in Spanish, but if it's longer in Spanish, then the characters will already be done. So you have to find a different word that fits the expression of the mouth. So all you can do basically is watch what is being said, and translate the words accordingly, trying to be in the same context. And that's why you, uh, a lot of times you see that the translation, they're like, they, they say asshole, and uh, here it's a scrotum. I mean, it's completely different, luckily. Um, <laughs> but that's the only tip I can give you, is, is try to get in the context. Uh, when you have to do it, when you have to do the voice acting, mm -hmm. we find it's hard to do, um, to match your voice and your words with the lips of the character. It's incredibly hard. Yeah, that's probably... I noticed you use beep sounds. To yes, to yeah. that's a, you, you do uh, three beeps, and in, uh, in between the beeps, there's a little pause, and so you do beep, 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 and then there's that little pause, and then the line starts. So you, you understand it like... Eh, eh, like and you know, rhythm. Yeah, okay. so you get into the rhythm, and that, uh, if you have more characters, they know that Oh, there's beeps coming. It's my turn. Problem is, and you've you've seen that uh, in the movie as well. There's been there's three scenes 
where all the text all of a sudden stops and the character is like, because there were too many beeps in there. You don't see them in the, in the movie, but they, they're just standing staring at each other and then all of a sudden go, enough of this. We couldn't change it because we couldn't just cut it because we didn't have a, a transition shot to go back, so we had mm. to use that. Um, that's the disadvantage of using beeps. What we've come to learn now from the experience of what we did was to do the beeps at the very start and then we'll do the, the whole scene after each other so that mm. the actors do know what they have to do. Um, and then record it from a different position over the shoulder camera, do it on the other, other side. And they have to keep on doing it. And then you have to rely on the actors. That is also the reason why we recorded it first and then had the actors do it. Because we had no idea if they could act. They were the owners of the suits. Um, it could have been my grandmother going, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, yeah, you have to adapt to the sort of, and it's, it's a long process, but as long as you make it a fun process, yeah. you can keep on going. It sounds more like a dance, actually. It is. The, the synchronization yeah. of, the, of the, the actions to the sounds, and you saw them in the, in the behind the scenes stuff as well. You saw them out of suit, out of character, just while everybody else was running around with cables and lights and shit. They were standing there, you know, by the window, playing that same, uh, that same audio clip over and over. Yeah getting their mind right, getting their notes, knowing which way they're going to look, and talking along with the, with the lines. So to do that really well is just a lot of practice. Practice every line like 20 times. Um, so if you're doing that you know, for fun, for free, for a, 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 just an anime series or whatever, if you want to do it really well, it is go just going to take a whole lot of work. But it's worth it, I can tell you. Well, a lot of it's for free. <laughs> Well, it depends on if you do it for free for yourself. True. Anybody else? Because we've got one, maybe we've got another, okay. Yeah, we've got another couple of minutes. Any other burning questions? <clears throat> Man, I love this audience. There's so much emotion. There's so much response. Anybody <laughs> <laughs> seen this one? Oh, oh. 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 Yes. Yeah, yes. You've seen it? Yeah. Oh, no, we're not. Is that a new character? Oh, no, no, no. This is actually a, quite um, funnily a picture of Megan Fox. But what? Um, you know the actress Megan Fox? <laughs> <laughs> look it up. Look it up. Megan Fox is a nun, and you, you'll find the real Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite astonishing. Megan, new character. Well, this one died. I can tell you that if we ever. We were going to do a second, of course. I know Megan Fox. Uh, but it will not be Bitter Lake 2 because everybody's dead. Yes. <laughs> Except a friend. Yes. And I have no idea what it is. What's all the setup to find the traitor? <laughs> okay, we're going to go do th through this, uh, this script again. And because we are both excellent professionals, we're going to show you how to do it right. <laughs> yeah? Because everyone else today, I mean, was just so, so crap, wasn't it? <laughs> I thought it was a. <laughs> I really did. I was really impressed with the, the quality, even of the, uh, the, the sort of non-native English speakers. They still gave great performances. I thought to everyone who had the guts to come up to the microphone, you did really, really well. The um, first step into... Because doing it in front of your computer is one thing, because nobody can see you. But into uh, doing it in front of a room full of people that will laugh at you and with the presenter that will mock you. <laughs> <laughs> that is... No. True, but I mean, it, it, I, I did my head to, to to come up here and, and stand there trembling because we, I stand there trembling as well. Yeah, it's very intimidating. Yep. Uh, so who should we have Shay play? So Shay be shall sh who shall we? Have? <laughs> as long as you don't have to throw out of <laughs> him. Do we want him to be the kung fu master yes. or lucky yes. gold? Oh wow. Oh. Well, if you're the Kung Fu master, then let me see. That means that you're also love uh, interest, love interest uh. and <laughs> you are also... Oh, you're a douche canoe! Uh. <laughs> I really knew that already. <laughs> um, oh, and then I get to be Lucky Gold Star and Expendable Servant and Arch Nemesis. All right. Are we ready? Yeah. 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 Put uh, down those heavy buckets, Lucky Monster. It is time I told you of your enigmatic past. 
But Kung Fu Master, since I was a cop when you rescued me from my family's burning ranch, you told me I could not know of my enigmatic past until I came of age. It is true that your training is incomplete, Lucky Gold Star. But your enigmatic past will soon catch up with you. Tell me more, Kung Fu Master. It was not a bizarre chopstick robbing accident that caused your family's ranch to burn down, as you may have been told. But my sister, love interest, still carries the guilt of that horrible day. She weeps her way through every meal. No, 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 no. Love interest is not your sister, Lucky Gold Star. She is the daughter of Archer Nemesis, the head of a rival clan, whose spies within your household caused the fire. Arch Nemesis has only fathered one daughter before his wife joined that pirate ship and left him. Lacking an heir, he knew that meant the end of his name. So he set the child adrift on the river and killed your family to add their land to his own. That seems needlessly complicated. <laughs> you are not wrong. <laughs> and meanwhile, outside, love interest and expendable servant see riders approaching the undisclosed mountain location. Oh, riders are approaching, expendable servant. <laughs> They're carrying the banner of arch nemesis. We must warn Kung Fu Master at once. You must go, Miss Love Interest. I will go to the captain of the guard, Douche Canoe, and he will help me close the gate. Your heart is pure and noble. Your heart is pure and noble, expendable servant. Your sixteen children must be very proud of you. By the way, there was a letter for you last week. Something about your life insurance expired. No, no, go now! <laughs> <coughs> Go now! Warn Kung Fu Master and your sexually ambiguous brother. At, at once! Captain Gushkaru, Captain Gushkaru, Arch Nemesis approaches. We must close the gate. Only your brave yet often questionable leadership can defend us from his soldiers. <laughs> and only my traitorous dagger can stab you in the throat. All of my blood! Indeed. All of my blood! <laughs> Master, uh, Arch Nemesis, is, oh, and Lucky Gold Star, whatever year. It was Arch Nemesis, the soldiers, Princess Love Interest. They came through the secret tunnels. We fought them off, but Kung Fu Master's undiagnosed diabetes claimed him. He died in my arms. <laughs> then, then there must be a traitor in the compound. But why did you call me a princess? Before he died, Kung Fu Master told me of my enigmatic past. It's not so hard if you try. <laughs> <laughs> you and I were raised as brother and sister, but you are the daughter of Arch Nemesis, and it was he who killed my parents. Hmm. That seems needlessly complicated. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Other than Kung Fu Master and I, only one man knew of the secret tunnels. You're right, Princess Love Interest. We were betrayed by none other than Captain Douche Canoe. What an asshole! Come, lucky old star, Arch Nemesis will soon reach the gate. We must escape. But he killed Kung Fu Master. I must avenge him. No, we must avenge him. Now you have told me about my enigmatic past, I suddenly remember the valley where I was born. Come, lucky old star, I will lead you to Arch Nemesis' stronghold. And at the gate, Dushkanu greets Arch Nemesis. You have done well, Dushkanu. As I promised, I'll see to it you are rewarded for your treachery. Has Kung Fu Master been eliminated? <laughs> yes, Lord Arch Nemesis. <laughs> the men you sent into the secret tunnel surprised him and triggered his undiagnosed diabetes. Just as I planned. And what about that cursed whelp, Lucky Goldstar, and that twice cursed daughter of mine? Well, um, no. <laughs> see, the thing is. That, I uh, should have known not to trust such an important task to you. Take me to them so that I can have an awesome duel with Lucky Goldstar. But, but um, they're, they're not here, Lord Arch Nemesis. The fuck you say? <laughs> <laughs> they were last seen riding to the valley of your stronghold. Oh, you moonbrain shit! I should kill you for such a failure! But wait, there's more, isn't there? I can see it in your beady little eyes. It, my lord. Oh. Prince's love interest to go the chopsticks. <gasps> to be continued. How about next year? Thank you for coming, everybody. It was great to hang out with you. Um, we're going to be around. If you have any, any further questions or anything else or any fantastic ideas, please come get us.
It's been an absolute blast to hang out with you. And thank you for such great performances as well. Thank you. Round of applause for you.